Hey, you're watching Swerve, and this is Slow on Mondays. Well, 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 what have we got here? We've got the shape tool, and it's probably the second best tool in Illustrator. It's only limited by your creativity, so if you can't think of something creative, it's not going to work. So when you're working with the shape tool, just make sure you have a little ounce of inspiration around just so you can start something up. The amazing thing about the shape tool, and the reason why it's my second best tool in Illustrator is because everything in the world has specific shapes and the shapes that Illustrator give you all together combined can create those shapes. There's no limitations to the shapes you can make. So you can make a shelf falling over, broken or something like that. Or you could make a donkey riding a horse. <laughs> pretty crazy. But the main thing I'm trying to get at is that it's pretty much flexible. And when you use it with the pen tool, oh my days, it's lethal. Just so you know that. And by itself, it's like a little cracker ready to blow and do something pretty much amazing. It'll blow you away. What can I say? Well, now that I've spoken about the shape tool, how about we head into Illustrator and let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is select the circle and I'm gonna make a really small one and a really large one just to accompany it. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is select all of them and increase the stroke. They look a bit too thin, like they've been starved. All right, so I think that's thick enough. They're looking healthy. And next thing we need to do is select this circle. And we're going to use the scissor tool just to cut off some areas. So press C. And we're going to select this area and somewhere around here. And we're going to press delete. And again. All right, so once we've done that, all you need to do is basically taper this area and in order to do that we need to hold control sorry about that I meant shift and W and we're gonna drag from the center out somewhere around here just so it matches the stroke and we're gonna move it up 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 around here awesome and we're gonna go to the edge of this edge and we're gonna drag it in and we're gonna do the same to the bottom side as well so we're gonna drag up all the way there and taper it in. All right, so that's looking perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do is basically get rid of this section over here for the smaller circle. So we're gonna select the small circle. And we're gonna press C and basically delete this area and click this area. And what we're gonna do is hold control and click the area you don't want and click delete. So control basically um, takes you back to the pointer tool without having to click the pointer tool. So control off and it goes back to the tool that you had before you selected control. All right, so I hope you understood that <laughs> because it was pretty much rambling. So I'm gonna continue. And what we need to do next is take the next step and add color. So in order to do that, we need to get the square tool and we're gonna convert it from a stroke to a fill. And I'm gonna choose, um, let's say, a dark hot pink. All right. So that's looking pretty sweet. So I'm gonna select this shape and what we need to do is move it behind the outline. So in order to, in order to do that, we need to hold Control Shift and the square um, bracket button going backwards so I'm gonna do that once you've done that you hold control a and what you want to do is basically hold alt and delete so what we basically done there was use the shape builder tool and all you need to do is press alt and delete and it deletes the area you don't want and so let's begin with the next bit which would be to add some highlights so before we do that we need to go to the gradient tool and give it a nice type of gradient so I'm gonna select the gradient tool 
and I'm going to go to the corresponding side and change the effects for it. So um, what I'm going to do is select this area to convert into a gradient and all you need to do is select this bit once and go over here and change that to the darker colour. So I'm going to change it to a dark hot pink. Once I've done that I want to go to the top bit select that once and do the same thing. Just a bit lighter. Alright so somewhere around here would be perfect. Yeah that's looking nice. And you want to change the rotation of the gradient to minus 90. Alright so that's what I'm looking forward to. If you want to change the gradient there's an awesome thing you can do with the gradient tool is select the gradient tool again and all you need to do is basically move that around. You can move this, just drag it around and just do the same thing. So you can do this, you can drag up here, you can drag down, you get the gist. But it's pretty awesome and I, I recently learned that I think a month ago and I was pretty astonished. So let's continue with this tutorial and we're going to add some highlights. So in order to add the highlights what we're going to do is get another ellipse tool and we're going to make it white. Alright so now that's white we're going to make it not a perfect circle we're going to make it an oval. I don't know why the gradient was still there let's change it back to white. Okay After Effects seems to be disagreeing with me so I will pause the video here and I will you know use my editing magic to perfect this issue. Right so I've fixed the um, issue basically all you need to do is select this colour over here instead of the gradient and you'll be pretty much dandy. So I'm going to move on here and I'm going to make a large one and then I'm going to move another one over here and just make it a bit smaller. So the way I moved it while copying is basically holding alt and just moving it around and it basically creates a, an extra copy for the design. Um, I need to make a, another small one just around here. So I'm going to make this one a perfect circle just to give it a nice look. Alright so this bit is just going to be a little bit of reflection. Just going to make it a bit smaller. Alright good. It's looking awesome. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Um, it doesn't really take this long. I just want it to look really perfect for this tutorial but I'm going to speed it up and move on. Alright so the next thing we need to do is basically add some text to give it a brand name or something awesome. So we're going to move on. I'm going to name it Bubble Blob. Such a random name. Why do I think of the weirdest names? <laughs> Who knows? So Bubble Blob. I guess Bubble Blob it is. Okay so um, I'm going to use Mikado, my favourite font and a lot of you were saying how there wasn't a free one. Um, there isn't a free one. I had to pay for mine. Um, but as a, a gift from me to you, I'm just going to give it to you for free in the description just so you can have your own version as well. And it has all the weights that you need. Um, no need to thank me. It's just me thank, thanking you basically for um, checking out my channel and liking what you see. Alright so I'm going to make that light and I'm basically going to copy this below. I'm going to make it a foundation. The great thing about, about Illustrator is that you can make your design anything you want. It can be a foundation, it can be a company, just something for fun. So I'm going to name it foundation. Foundation. So bubble blob foundation. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 
and I'm just going to add a trademark just to give it that authentic look. However, if you're working for a client, just make sure that you you basically buy the trademark for the for the client. But you know, for this, we're just gonna make it authentic, like I'm working for a client. <laughs> if you want to know where to get um copy um copyright and trademark, um, if you want to know where to purchase it, I'll leave a link in the description just so you can. Um, if you're working for a client, you can pay for the copyright and include that into the cost of the logo. Just so no one steals your work. Alright, so this looks pretty awesome. I'm thinking it needs a bit of a shadow on the edge. So what I'm going to do is basically use another circle. And this is another trick that I've learnt is that you can make a circle and make it like that all right perfect and what we're going to do is make another circle but we need to use another color just so we know where the shadow is going to be and we're going to make a shadow like this so somewhere around here i think yeah like that and what you want to do is basically cut that shape. So what we're going to do is use the Shape Builder tool again. And as you can see, there's three sections. We want to get rid of this section and this section. So we're going to hold Alt and drag. And there we have it. So what we're going to do now is basically make this black. So let's change the color. And once you do that, we can go to the opacity area, which is over here, and we can make that an overlay. And with an overlay, it just gives it a bit of a better look, if you get what I mean. <laughs> so, this logo is looking awesome. It's finished. And yeah, I hope to see what you came up with. Just leave a tweet. I've left my Twitter in the description as well, so you can tweet me your designs just show me what you're up to I want to know what you're up to so the logo's finished the tu tu tutorials finished I can't speak <laughs> um, yeah so the tutorials finished I hope you liked it don't forget to leave a like subscribe and comment and you know don't think just swerve <laughs>